Hello everyone, I'm Trisha Joyner. For the past 25 years I've been teaching traditional Russian Zhostova painting all over the U.S. and the world. I've been to Russia over 20 times. Working with master painter Slava Letkov, I developed a technique for the three stages of the painting using acrylics. This happened after I was watching the painters in the factory paint their first stage on a metal tray, put it in the oven to heat set it to dry, and pull it out and add linseed oil over the top of it to do the second part of the painting, which is the shading, using glazes. I knew that we could translate this into acrylic painting without having to use the uh, drying of the ovens. This also gave us the ability to use a lot of different surfaces. We didn't have to just paint on uh, metal trays, which could take the heat from the ovens. On the 9th of November, I will be teaching my first class using Zoom and the Internet. And I wanted to be able to show you how I set up my uh, painting space and to make myself comfortable and the most successful by being neat, tidy, and organized. So here is going to be uh, an example of what I use and what I am uh, promoting that maybe you can use to help yourself get started. This is my table and I paint with a, a, a palette that is hard. It is Formica and it is about the size of a piece of paper. So it's a little bit less than the standard size of a paper. But you could be using something else, a piece of glass, a tile, something that's uh, solid and hard. And the reason I use that instead of a paper palette is because we load the brush over and over again in the same space. And if you're using a paper palette and it gets wet, some of this little plastic coating or the paper itself will get too wet to stay whole and little bits and pieces of it will come out and end up in your transparent glazes in your second stage of your painting. So my advice is not to use paper but instead find some hard surface. We used to carry glass wherever we went because that's what they had in Russia that made it easy for them uh, to find and work on because glass was available. But we discovered when the airplanes put those glass pieces into something they're shipping, they often come out the other end broken. So we had to find a different surface and this works very well. Here is my water jar. It's a clear water jar and again it's on a coaster with two little birds that we had printed from something Slava did. And when I rinse the brush, I turn my brush against the side, the smooth side of the glass jar. I can also see when I've touched water because it's clear glass. I don't pounce up and down. I don't, occasionally you have to switch, but I don't switch back and forth very often. And I do not use those water basins that have grids in the bottom because these are sable brushes and they their tips get torn up if they are used again and again and again over something that's rough. These are my paints. These are the colors that I'll be using in the project that I'm working on. I have them close to me. There's extra paints that I use from time to time commonly. And then of course I have my enormous collection of Deco Art Americana acrylics. And here is um, a mug from Zhell. It's a huge factory in Russia and every home has or just about every home has gel pieces in it. And then I have a little collection of the tools that I use most often and I keep them in this gel cup but I pulled them out here so I could show you what you need to have. I, it's a brush mix technique, so I don't use a palette knife very often, but I do like this palette knife that has the pointed tip on it, so something rather small. 
you will need a couple of chalk pencils or one at least I use two because I want to make sure that it's sharp enough and I don't have to go looking for a way to sharpen it when I want to use it um, a stylus to transfer your design and I use Pigma 0.01 pens because it's permanent ink in order to trace the designs I also have a knife that will take the paint off of my surface so when I am through painting all I have to do I'll put a little paint out here so you can see um, when I've loaded the brush and this has started to dry out and cl clutter up my palette I can take this paint knife and take the paint right off of the palette wipe it off on a piece of paper towel to clean it up and just keep on going I don't have to throw out uh, pieces of paper over and over again or run lots of paint down the drain so and I'm copying Slava's technique he this would be glass he has a knife that he got when he was in school so that was a long time ago and he carries that with him everywhere he goes so I found this straight-edged knife that will work the same way and it has become a permanent part of my supplies a kneaded eraser, some scotch tape to hold your designs down, and of course whatever brushes you're going to be using. And I will be doing a little video on brushes and why I use the particular ones I do shortly. So that will be coming to you also. This is a little cup, wide mouth, so when I'm adding water to my paint I can easily find it's clean water I keep clean in here I rinse in the big jar and rinse my brush out but I keep clean water in here so I'm adding clean water to my paint and to set up the palette I use a piece of deli wrap move this out of the way here I use a piece of deli wrap that I have folded in half with a fold to the back so that it's not my way when I'm loading my brush and then a piece of blue shop towel which of course is on my list of supplies and I pour a little bit of water on that shop towel and it is also a folded facing fold out for the same reason so that this won't open up and get in the way and I'll put the paper deli wrap over the top of it and you can see water comes through and it will keep the paint moist so if I put my paint out here I can work all day long with this paint that's moist and when I load my paintbrush I don't load in the pile of paint I pick the paint up like it was a shovel put some more paint out here for you there's my paint color that I'm going to be using not diluted straight paint I pick it up with a brush like a shovel and move it over to a clean place on my palette and load both sides of the brush with this color so my palette stays clean I can control what I am doing on this hard palette I can see and control instead of mushing up all over the place on my where I've put the paint so this is how then when I go to rinse my paintbrush I would go over here to the jar and turn the brush against the side you can see I think that the paint very well comes out of there I also keep a piece of paper towel shop paper blue, blue paper underneath my palette so that after I have loaded my brush if there's too much water get over here where you can see it if there's too much water on the paintbrush then you simply touch to your paper towel push against the ferrule in the back and it takes out the extra water so this is my setup deli wrap blue shop towel inside it folded in half deli wrap fold to the back paper towel fold 
to the in, folded to the, so the fold edge is on the back and the open edge is inside. There's the palette and underneath the palette is a piece of shop towel. I use two palettes. One that I'm putting the paint on uh, like this and a second one that I load the brush on because this small space would use up in a hurry with all the times that I load the brush. And over here you can see that I also have the first stage of the painting set up where I can look at it. Now when I'm repeat painting to record I have to look at this or I might be tempted to change colors or do something else that isn't on the photograph so um, I have that posted somewhere. If I was painting a new project I wouldn't need that because I'd be working on figuring out how I wanted to paint it without looking at something else. So this is how I set my palette up nice and clean. I like pretty things around me which is why I have this kind of an object under there and um, I'm ready to start my painting.